What's up guys and welcome to another exciting episode of Reef Keeping. So here's the thing we're going to talk about today and I figured it's appropriate because since I just started this channel again that it's best to talk about water chemistry and filtration and then coral care. As a matter of fact, a person on the channel, Steve Diaz, commented he would like to get, get advice on how to get his coral to grow. So the number one thing that I would recommend about this, going in this hobby, is researching the parameters. The number one thing that I found useful is having one of these. You see this? This is a reference card, so just in case every water change or every you know chemistry or water check that I do, I run through and I make sure that my temperature is on point, my salinity is around that range, pH is around the range, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, and nitrate. Now, you know, ever since I've had the tank up for more than three months, I don't check for nitrates anymore. And I usually check it when I start seeing corals don't open or they have issues like that. Then I'll go back and check it, but once you get up and going, it's a lot easier to, to maintain. So once you get this reference card, the second thing that I found is helpful is to get a controller, okay? Your controller does a lot of work for you. What it does is it maintains the temperature at the right range. If it's too hot, the fan kicks on. See that right now? Fan's on. If it gets too cold or around the range that you want it to turn off, it'll turn off, all right? Another thing to invest in is a doser. Now this, this thing is way too bright at night, so I just cover the LED up. But this is the DP4 Jebel, and I will certainly do a review if you guys want me to. Comment below, let me know. But this, is a very very helpful device before I had this I was dosing manually by hand and by manually I mean let me try to find here the tube for you no no these are tiny these are test tubes but usually I'll use syringes like this but they're bigger to dose you know my chemicals but now that I've had this I pretty much don't have to ever ever oh man this thing keeps falling down I don't ever ever have to touch these again because this is automatic it's on a time range okay seven o'clock in the morning it'll kick on seven at night it'll kick on it'll dose alkalinity and calcium okay here you go so when I started doing this before I had the dosing pump I was doing this manually and what I noticed was that sometimes I wouldn't be home or sometimes I would forget or sometimes I would be late so my you know chem chemistry would always fluctuate and it would always be all over the place. But ever since I've, you know, bought one of these for $70, I've never ever had to worry about that anymore, okay? Because when you lose a coral, that's like $40 a piece. Well, you might as well just buy like, you know, one of these dosing pumps and get it over with. And it's automated, so let me just put these away. Another thing to invest in that I would recommend is to get one of these auto top offs. If you don't have one, look into getting an auto top off auto top off so the thing with the auto top off is that your water doesn't maintain you know it doesn't maintain the same that water level all the time because lighting you know humidity in the air and things like that causes water to evaporate so when the water evaporates salt concentration then increases because now your water volumes volume is lower than your salinity that is currently in the tank what this does is it says hey this level is below where I'm set right now. It's, it tells the computer, hey, you need to turn on this pump because the water is getting low. And then the water in here is just pure RODI water, okay? So with that, what happens is that the water now kicks in, fills it up to the level where you set it, and shuts off. So it's very useful to do that. And another thing to invest in is an RODI unit. You never know how dirty the city water was, okay? Or the water is. When I started this, I didn't have RODI, RODI water, and I had huge, huge algae bloom, and I couldn't figure out what was going on, and I couldn't figure out, you know, why it was happening. I started turning off my lights just to see if I could kill off the algae that way, started doing massive amounts of water, and it didn't help, okay? Another thing to keep in mind is that this, this is just ideal range, okay? It's ideal range, you don't have to be exact, there's no exact number, there's no perfect number. Just to get, you know, get around the range where it's, you know, it's prime for corals to grow. And, and you can tell that corals are growing when you start seeing results like white tips or, you know, color, uh, corals opening like these. These guys open, they don't have any issues. If they're closing, then that means 
you know, do another water check. Do a little, you know, you know change up your lighting. Try to see if that helps because what I did before, and I, I'll tell you this, uh, you know, I had T5s on this when they first came on. T5s are great, by the way. You know, T5s are excellent. But metal highlights are what I switched back to from after I went from T5 to LEDs. LEDs was so bad. I lost some corals and I had bad luck with it, but who knows, you know, people, I've seen people that had really, really great things happening with LEDs. But for me, they didn't work out. I went back to metal highlights where I first started with the 55 gallon. And ever since then, growth has been wonderful. And here's the thing that I'm going to teach you in this is that there's no one solution to this whole hobby. And that's the most complicated thing about this hobby is that something may work for you doesn't mean it'll work for someone else. The same thing, vice versa, something works for them doesn't mean it works for you, all right? So you're always gonna learn something new. Now another new thing that I started because before, like I told you, I had a 72 bowl front and I had a sump at the bottom. In the bottom I was growing Cheeto for filtration. Now I got some mangroves growing and I just put them in last week. So we'll see how that goes, but it's an experiment. You know, my water isn't that bad right now, and I'm actually starting to do water changes only, you know, once out of three weeks, because I've noticed that, you know, I haven't, ever since I started dosing, this stuff is still growing my corals, and I could still save on, you know, changing salt water, so I figured, why not, you know? I'll just use RODI water instead of brewing a new batch of salt. But, I'll tell you some problems that we all face in the hobby, you know, we have these hair algae, and this is, this is where I think these things can be avoided because once you spot these problems, take care of it. Do a water change, take this coral out and literally get a razor blade and cut off all the hair algae that you can and you know what? It's not going to be perfect but try to get as much as you can out of it. Also if you notice in the back wall I have a bit of bubble, uh, was it bubble algae. Now I had that issue before and it was worse than this and I started picking it out but with my own hand. Just make sure you don't pop the bubble because I think there's some chemical in there that may cause it to grow back after you, you get it out of the water. But the number one thing that I noticed, uh, you know, I've gone to other people's tank and they have excessive hair algae or bubble algae is because they lack maintenance. They lack, you know, maintaining that stuff. So I'd recommend just check up on it. Do your daily or your weekly routine and always just, you know, make sure if you see the pest, take care of it before it spreads anyways that's all I got right now if you have any more comments or any advice make sure to post below also check the uh, Steve Diaz channel out give him advice if you have any idea uh, as always like subscribe share and thanks for joining me till next time see you guys later